you're doing, man. It's awesome. Hey guys, it's Alex. Why am I out here in the middle of nowhere in 95 plus degree weather? Well, today what I want to do is I want to kind of showcase as to what happens specifically when you run your car in not so optimal conditions. Now this sounds like common knowledge for a lot of people that know what they're doing when it comes to racing your car in the proper conditions. A lot of people nowadays just use a draggy, go out on whatever day and wonder what the, you know, why the car went quicker one day, why it didn't go quicker the next day. This might seem like common sense to a lot of you, where when you go out on a very hot day, your car is not gonna perform the best it can. But believe it or not, based on my emails, the ticket system, and conversations I've had with people, they don't really understand the correlation between extremely hot weather and the lack of performance on these vehicles. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna run the car where it previously ran a 1235 at, I believe, 115, and we'll see if in 95 plus, it is, it is gross hot today in 90 plus 95 plus degree weather if the car performs worse now i'm suspecting yes but there is a bit of a wrinkle to this if let's just say the engine is only able to process so much air and the restriction is the exhaust it might run a similar number because it can only process what it can take in i know that that's like that's like a very multi-layered comment but if you understand uh, you know, how, every, how air density and how these things process air, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But I suspect, based on the IAT, based on the humidity, I think this car is gonna be down at least two tenths. So I think this car has maybe a 1255 in it today. Same conditions, same tune, same E85, same everything. I haven't changed anything on the car. Only because I wanna test how much the air density affects the performance of the vehicle. So I'm gonna go out there in the same road that I went to 1239 in, then another road where I went 1235 in, and see what the car runs in both roads with different conditions. It was tested at 70, I wanna say 70 degrees last time where it went 1235. Now we're well over 90, sticky hot, gross. This is why I tell people, if you want the car to run the best, it's better to just leave the car at home during the summer unless you live in the north where the summer is 70 something degrees in the south it's 85 at 7 a.m so let's get out there let's see what we can do about testing the car out in not so optimal conditions and see if we can run anything near the number we ran before so a lot of people i'm sure are going you know alex what's uh are you doing this everyone knows the car is going to go you know slower in the in the summer than in the winter well, not necessarily. Um, not that it won't do that. What I'm saying is not a lot of people know that. You guys automatically assume everyone knows everything and it's just not the case. So I will test it out and get you guys some, some content. Um, I, just, I just had this weird underlying theory <laughs> that the air density matters less on low power vehicles. Um, let's say you have a 17 second Honda. I don't think that car gives a shit about what's happening. <laughs> you know, like it can only produce so much air load. It can only process so much air load. So it's only gonna run a certain number. So it's like, who cares? But I could be wrong about that. So I think I'm gonna be down two tenths. That's my, it's kind of my hope to be honest with you, to be down two tenths or so. So I'm gonna try to, um, you know, go to the same road, duplicate the same exact thing. Got a different camera so I can hold up the drag E before I wasn't able to get you these views. But let's get the car up to temp. Now the IATs starting off are 120. Remember guys, before when I was cruising and it would stop and test, 80. They'd only be up to 80. Now they're already one, uh, 120. So we are up 40 degrees in IAT already right off the rip. That's definitely gonna account for some um, performance loss so enough talking let's get the draggy set up let's data log it too so we can review it at home and see if we can be close to 12.3 but i think it'll be like a 12.55 ish car which is two tenths down from before this is actually a really good representation of florida slash mexico so look at zoom in zoom in and you can see the line where the rain starts it's a rainbow there so look at that probably going through a rain wrapped tornado for all I know. So yeah, 
yeah, let's see how it goes. 1500. second road let's see what she does oh my god didn't even break the tires loose look at the 60 foot sheesh <laughs> wow all right well that proves that the air sucks the car performs like crap final attempt I'm just gonna let off. We already know that 60 foot tells us the thing's not gonna go quicker than 12.5. All right, there you have it. I don't even have to look at the data log. It launched lazy, IATs are over 120, shift points are at 74, 75, 7600 or so. It, it looked to be the same as before. It just felt lazier. And a lot of people need to understand that that's the, the outside conditions are almost more important than anything else. That's why when you hear the term boost weather, there's a reason they call it boost weather. There's a reason at World Cup when on the Saturday qualifier, the DA is like negative 1500 and they expect ridiculous, ridiculous ETs to come out of that because of the available density in the air. I mean, there's just more air available. Have you guys ever gone out in the morning, really, really, really early in the morning? brisk brisk morning and you take a big deep breath in or you go jogging in the winter and your lungs literally feel cold imagine exactly that happening but in an engine and the engine loves 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 the cold air a lot of you guys are saying Alex we know this this is common knowledge believe it or not just because you're a car person and you understand air density and how it correlates to horsepower does not mean every car person understands this. Remember guys, there are still people out there that think anti-lag actually works on a supercharged vehicle. So please understand, people also think that a ram air trumpet style intake makes more horsepower than a air box that is collecting air from a less turbulent source and away from the engine bay like a fender well intake it's not common knowledge anymore common knowledge is not common anymore so that's why i'm doing these tests to show you that on these exact same mods a visual representation and everyone right now is using the draggy help people are slapping draggies on their ops that they're about to race if you saw that video that was hilarious so don't think that it's common knowledge a lot of people don't really know these things and they're just learning and getting into it and that's why i make these videos Thanks for listening, guys. I'll talk to you later.